multiple sides in the Civil War, which proves one thing to me that a song can belong to all of us. You don't have to be a rich man to have a beautiful thing like music. I could close my eyes and hear this song and picture a group of beaten, wounded, ragged Civil War soldiers trying to make that last mile home after the last battle. And if there was strength for a song, this would have been a great inspiration. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is hey out there. This is November 16th, 2017, and it's uh, just about 9.26 in the evening here in Northern California. And uh, today, as usual, I'll uh, be getting into a lot of stuff. I just shared a clip from uh, Johnny Cash there at the beginning, the Battle Hymn of the Republic, of course. And... Um, I think a lot of people uh, can really relate to uh, this little tune, particularly Americans as a whole. Not the North, not the South, but just as a people, as a nation. Brother against brother, that was a civil war, you know, and we have to remember that. that uh, It was not a uh, good time in American history, and uh, I suppose the best thing we can do as Americans now is to try not to repeat it, but to understand that there is elements out there that would like us to repeat it while they sit back in their fortified ivory towers and their private armies and security services to keep the, uh, the masses away, should the masses ever discover who had instigated the uh, fight between the American people. It's these George Soros types, I mean, that's just an archetype, uh, is your George Soros, but of course you got your Hillary Clintons, your Slick Willies, and your John McCain's out there, and uh, so many others of these top-ranking politicians that... Uh, the kind that voted for the bailout of 08, I would say, are the type that um, would like uh, would like this division in America to proliferate, and uh, they would do everything they they could in their power to um, deflect attention away from themselves. Now, bear in mind that these people have a religion that is not thought of typically as a religion, but in its truest sense it's really satanism it is if you look up the term diabolism uh, then you'll find it's basically worship of the devil um, so these are people that don't value their conscience they don't value their soul they don't value integrity or honor their god is the god of this world which jesus described as mammon or money and uh, we can all understand, if we're honest, uh, how alluring and enticing money is. Um, but normal people that are following their own godly instincts, not their evil instincts, uh, would not even compromise their integrity, their honor, or their soul for all the money in the world. And that's a beautiful thing to know. It's important to know. It's the kind of thing that helps me to carry on, to cope, that encourages me and comforts me. Because, like I've mentioned before, is that uh, I feel alien in this world so often. I feel like I'm seeing things that other people just aren't seeing through visualization techniques that God allows all of us to have. I mean, imagine there's two lakes, and there's one that's muddied and bloodied and that is the secular world system that has been manipulated to the nth degree by the evil people of this world the same kind that want us divided these are your fascists the truest fascists They're, it's an amalgamation of government power and private power 
Yeah, it's fascism in my mind, like Mussolini described, I believe it was. Of course, he was a fascist, so he should know, right? But it's where the government, basically, who's supposed to be our servants, our employees, uh, are traitorous, and they are working against the best interests of the people. And they've done that most recently with manipulating the cost of housing because it benefits the government because they get their the taxes they get off properties is based on a percentage. So the higher the cost of the housing, the more they make back. Do you understand this? So the incentive, the motive is clear why the government would do such a thing because it sounds preposterous that our employees, our servants would turn on us like that. But that's what they do. So these George Soros types, the uh, New World Order is the evil world order cabal. I mean, it's these weather change alarmists, your popes, um, establishmentarians basically at large are responsible. Evil ones, those ones that don't value their soul, that see that as not relevant, not pertinent to them. They say, no, you know, you're the stupid one. I'm pragmatic, they say. I'm practical, I have common sense, but you're stupid. You don't know that... Uh, your conscience and your integrity and your honor, all this BS, is not going to pay your rent. You understand that, right? I mean, that's so that's the way they think. They think they're much smarter than the masses that f try to follow godly instincts, that value their soul and their, their conscience and their integrity. Uh, these people are your crony capitalists like George Soros, who claims to be this altruistic, communist, socialist type guy, right? And that's the perception for a lot of people, well-meaning socialists out there. Perception is reality. So you could say, well, it's utter hogwash. It's socialism and communism has never worked. I mean, as an example, I would cite Russia, uh, that they had to abandon it. They said, this is not good for the people. Because what happens is you've got a handful of elitists at the very top that you've got this Orwellian situation, a draconian situation, a statist situation, a totalitarian, totalitarian situation, an authoritarian situation. And it simply doesn't work because, in all honesty, I would have to say, well, yeah, it makes sense, you know, take from the haves, give to the have-nots, the, hob the Robin Hood thinking, right? Um, even if that could work, it'd be wrong because theft is always wrong. It's ill-gotten gain. I don't want what belongs to another person. And I don't think anybody should. So on its face, it's still wrong to take from the haves to give to the have-nots. We don't need to do that to have justice on earth, to have prosperity, universal prosperity, universal freedom, universal peace and safety and security, all the things we want, basically universal happiness, You've got to have those elements, those components, in order to have happiness. So understand how diabolistic these people are, that they, they sit back in the shadows, and sometimes they get in your face even, overt and covert. They're insidious. Um, their motivation is to keep us deflected, divided. Uh, look at each other go at each other's throats just so you don't look at us uh, we're looking at you know we're talking about uh, the money printing class of people the money masters of misery this illegitimate gaggle of murderous thugs really so lying cheating and stealing is as easy as falling off a log and that analogy comes from you know they used to float logs down the river and people would ride the logs right steer the logs down the river right and control log jams, I suppose, that sort of thing. So it was really easy to fall off a log in the river, right? So that's where that comes from. But, yeah, so lying, cheating, and stealing is really easy. And uh, for these people, it's nothing. And murder, mass murder, is r close behind. They, they, they have no qualms about mass murder. In fact, they're so deluded, so delusional, so possessed by satanic forces um, that they... Uh, that they uh, believe they're the good guys. Uh, if you look at the Georgia Guidestones, for example, you'll see that uh, these sayings on these new Ten Commandments, these giant monuments they built on marble in the state of Georgia, uh, they sound so, so good and right and proper uh, until you read that this is 
when the earth is at 500 million. So they fully intend on attempting, doing their, giving it to the college try to get the, uh, the earth down to 500 million. And that is in order to save the earth, right? So that's how they rationalize it. And they're doing it bold face, you know, brazenly, right in our faces. They're doing this stuff. The Pope's on board, Al Gore, all these pseudo intellectuals that are just big fat hypocrites. And it really is, it's an indulgence, like Alex Jones points out. It's a syntax, basically, like that they did to tobacco. When every day of the week, smokers outlive non smokers. I'm not encouraging anybody to smoke, I'm just pointing out a matter of fact that it's diet often, the things we're consuming that could be so bad. Uh, the toxins, the uh, soda pop has all got this high fructose corn syrup, very toxic. They use mercury in the manufacture, so you get some of that residue in there, brain toxin, and all kinds of diseases. All the, You notice diabetes going through the roof, type A, type B, type 1, type 2, whatever. Uh, I got a neighbor friend, one day he's strong as an ox, he didn't smoke. Uh, he was actually my neighbor's mechanic, but uh, I've already outlived the man by five years. Uh, one day he's strong as an ox, and the next day he's dead from a heart attack. It happens all the time. My mother died, although she was a smoker, at 47, uh, not quite 48. That was um, in 1979, so that was 38 years ago, uh, November 10th, so just six days ago. But, uh, you know, the point is, is that We've got to be on our guard. It reminds me of what Jesus taught. Be ye as shrewd as serpents, which originally the meaning of shrewd was basically evil. So here's Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace, the perfect reflection of God Almighty, as good as we need, good enough to satisfy all of us. I mean, you know, if Christ isn't good enough for you, then there's nothing else to look forward to. Because God's not going to give any more sacrifices, any more ransom is to be paid for our sin. Because that's essentially what Jesus did. He poured out his spirit on the earth. And when he left, he said that I'm not leaving you alone just because I'm leaving. I am sending the spirit, the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the counselor, the encourager. It's all good things. It's a direct connect to God. Any one of us can be baptized at any time, be born again at any time. It's just a state of mind, a state of heart. Uh, there's nothing wrong with getting baptized in a church, whatever, in the river. Uh, it's just that that's a public acknowledgement that's showing the whole world that I'm not afraid to say I belong to Jesus. I belong to God. Uh, and so, you know, that's, that's okay. That's good. That's defiant of the evil one. Just as the evil one is defiant of God and his goodness, so it's good for the righteous to be defiant of the evil one. And so that's a baptism is this being born again. You all must be born again. You know, and they used to rib Jesus back in the day. I mean, it seems like they're ribbing him, saying, what do you mean? You were supposed to enter a second time into your mother's womb and all this garbage. And Jesus said, you know, you're an idiot. You know, you've got to you've got to think, you know, use your God given imagination to consider the allegory, the metaphor, the, the, the parable about what he's talking about being born again. And Jesus talked about resurrection of the dead. I mean, some people think, well, that's part of it, too, is that we need to be born again. We've got to relinquish this entire body. It's a body of death. It's a mortal body, and it must go. And then we must receive these imperishable bodies that are promised in Scripture. So that's another way to think of it. Uh, it doesn't matter. The, the point is, is that being close to God is a personal decision. It's a decision to have a relationship with God, to acknowledge God as your owner, rightful owner, to be his bond servant, his slave, free slave, because you damn well want to and nothing's going to stop you. It's just to be his friend. His yoke is easy, his load is light. There's all kinds of great reasons to be his friend. I mean, it's easy. You know, whoever gives one of these little ones that loves me even a drink of cold water will not lose his reward. So there's great rewards to be had for helping him to win friends for his kingdom. That's essentially it. That's the most important thing I do in this series of videos I do, is just trying to win friends for God. Because this world blows. I mean, I have watched this world blow chunks, and more and more so, for decades since the assassination of JFK. There was a coup. It was a money-printing coup, okay? He was getting rid of the Federal Reserve, okay? That alone is enough reason to say the next day after the assassination of JFK, the appearance the hint of impropriety by the Federal Reserve, the idea that they hired hitmen or something 
to take him out because he was abolishing them. He was nullifying them. We don't need you. He was already circulating. He had already supplanted the Federal Reserve notes with these silver certificate silver notes. So the very next day, the Federal Reserve, bye-bye, later, see ya. Okay, that's what we should have said to these people.